Today we're all supposed to genuflect about the NHS, because apparently the NHS has been wonderful. It's been the reason that we're all still alive, the reason we're all still healthy, the reason we're all still beaming, and we've got glowing skin. So it's 70 years of the NHS since its inception in the Clement Attlee government in 45. 70 years of medical malfeasance, 70 years of medical interactions and misdiagnoses, 70 years of MRSA, 70 years of rejecting alcohol-based disinfectants so that nothing gets killed, so that MRSA can be generated, so that any number of diseases can be generated in those wards, in those hospitals, that aren't killing any bacteria. You know, people always used to say you could smell the alcoholic-based disinfectant when you walk through hospitals, and it always felt clean. And it actually was clean. Now that they've been banned by the EU, they're not clean. And the diseases are coming back. And the most dangerous place to be on the planet besides the crater of Niragongo Volcano, is a hospital. In fact, you're probably safer on a platform two weeks above the great, the great lake of Niragongo than a hospital. If you spend two weeks in a hospital, you would probably get an infection. You wouldn't get that infection from the volcano. So, you know, we need more nurses, we need more hospitals, we need more doctors. Isn't that a failure of healthcare? To me, that represents a failure of healthcare. If healthcare was functioning, if it was working, then there would be fewer nurses, fewer doctors, and less buildings required to be built. There wouldn't need to be any more hospitals because we're already solving health, aren't we? But no, with the World Health Organization's projections on carcinogenic carcinogenicity and uh, cancer, in the next 10 years, spiraling out of control because their estimates and their projections are based on the increased carcinogenicity uh, applied from things like 5G, which we know electromagnetic frequency radiation is carcinogenic. We know that. We know it causes cancer. We know that. We know mobile phones. We know smart meters. We know 5G, 4G. We know it causes cancer. But we also know that cannabis cures it. We also know that it eats the cells. We know that it shrinks tumor cells, the CBD alone. And then the THC has lots of other different pr properties, etc. So that's the future of medicine. We know that the NHS hasn't been investing in that. We know that they still treat cancer by blasting the immune system with radiation so the person doesn't have an immune system so that the remnants of that immune system are fighting the diseases and whatever there is foreign invaders trying to attack the body maybe they can last about five to ten years but that's chemo and it's not therapy it's a chemical it's derived from mustard gas and we call it chemotherapy to make people happy when you blast someone's body with a radiation that isn't therapy that isn't the 2018 way of treating cancer, when we know there's a substance out there that can get rid of your cancer, it can eliminate your cancer, and leave every host cell intact. Leave it completely untouched. Leave every cell alone, and only target the foreign invaders, the malignant cells. But they don't put money into that. And now they're actually putting money, and wasting all that money from the Brexit dividend and other money that the NHS has got that they waste. They're wasting that money on putting machines in car parks to test preemptively for cancer. Because it's important to screen for bowel cancer and then go to chemo early, even, before you've even got it. Because it's like they've just completely forgotten about the CBD-THC connection. Because they don't really care, they're on their own trajectory. They've got their own Rockefeller medicine, they know it doesn't work. They know they've got endless things to treat people with. Take this every day, effectively treat you. Take it every day and it's effective, really. You haven't actually got anything to cure any chronic conditions. You can't even cure a common cold. You can't cure a cold sore. So what the hell are you good for? Why the hell should we give you 20 billion? And why does everyone have to genuflect at the NHS? when their record of growth indicates a record of failure of healthcare. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. They have failed healthcare. They failed to look after our health. They failed society. And healthcare, as an allopathic monopoly of medicine, which is prescribed in Rockefeller institutions, has failed. Because we've not grown over millions of years, over thousands of years, to be adjusting to these chemicals, because these chemicals are new foreign bodies in the world. They're new things that have been invented in the world. They're not designed to go along with our chemistry and our biology, like the sim symbiotic nature of all the actual herbs and vitamins and minerals that we are supposed to assimilate, but that someone told us that we don't need to. And for some reason then we started getting all these chronic conditions associated with lack of those vitamins and minerals. Go figure. But the NHS, which is getting 20 billion, the NHS, which is campaigning for more money and asking for more, even though it gets loads and, you know, it's completely mismanaged, it's being privatised, etc. The NHS just says that vitamins and minerals aren't important. So, doctors basically are very good at procedures, but everything that they know, every procedure that they know is pretty much 
crap. Doctors cannot treat chronic conditions. They just can't. So if you have a chronic condition like arthritis, like Alzheimer's, like ADD, like oh, diabetes, any number of things, you treat them with vitamin and minerals. You return the uh, resources to your body and your body will make use of those resources and repair itself. That is the big secret of the body. I had IBS one time. I was diagnosed with IBS. And it was coming every weekend and it really, really ruined my night clubbing and I felt awful and had to sit down and nothing was getting rid of it. I thought I was going to be taking um, Buscapan for life and Mebevarine and all these hard drugs, and spasmodics, antispasmodics, stomach antispasmodics. But I bought a thing called Beyond Tangy Tangerine which contains 90 vitamins and 60 minerals. I took it for about two years and suddenly I didn't have a problem with my gut again. As far as I'm concerned, I repaired my gut and as far as I'm concerned and as far as the doctor was concerned, that that was impossible to do. But I did it and I haven't suffered from an attack since.